Hello everyone and thanks for tuning into the Financial Investor channel. My name is Brent and today we're going to be doing a walkthrough of a property I currently have in contract. This is a three bedroom, one bath located in a B class neighborhood. It's not the best, it's not the worst, but it's in a good area. I've contacted six different property managers, let them know, hey, I'm going to be taking control of a three bedroom, one bath located on this road. Do you guys have any other rentals in this area? What are your estimates as far as rent for these sort of homes, depending on the quality of the home? They gave me a range, you know, between $1,100, $1,300, really, depending on the inside, you know, the quality of your home, how up to date is it? Is it modern? Does it have a big yard? So many different factors can go into estimating your home's rent. I felt pretty comfortable just kind of listening it towards the lower end of their estimates, but we're going to definitely be doing some rehab to this one. So we're going to start off going through the the walkthrough of the home inside and outside the, in the backyard going over the MLS price where I offered in at the addendums I went back to the seller with you know repairs that were needed or have them reduce the price and then go over the numbers theoretically of how this one should play out so here we're, let's go ahead and get started if you are brand new to the channel I do make stock market real estate and other investment style videos weekly so consider subscribing Hit the notification bell to be notified of every time I upload a new video. So here, right off the bat, this is the first bedroom here. Brown carpet on the bottom. That'll all get yanked. Car, uh, you know, closet here. The walls here. The walls are teal green. And then the right wall here is actually gray. So my plan going into this, rip all the carpet out, put in some laminate, paint the walls, maybe add some doors to the closet here. This is the bedroom. Again, carpet here will need to all be ripped up. That was my plan. Put in some laminate, scratch-proof, waterproof laminate. Here, second bedroom. Second bedroom, as I was walking these, uh, when I go into a property, I always walk 100%, you know, around the outside of the room, check the floors. This one, as I had walked it earlier, it did have a couple soft spots in the subfloor. So this subfloor will need to, you know, as I rip the carpet up, have somebody else rip the carpet up. I'm going to have the, the subfloor replaced as well to make sure that it's you know sturdy and it's going to endure. Here going into the kitchen, the previous owners did actually rehab the kitchen here recently. They put in a new oven there, new countertops, all of this stuff. I'm going to go ahead and leave it. Refrigerator there, vinyl on the floor. Here going into the bathroom. The bathroom, I'm going to completely uh, replace all of this. Uh, maybe not the vanity, but the tub, all of this will get pulled out, replaced, put in a one piece. All these little things here, washer, dryer plugs, and water heater here on the right. This water heater is 20 some years old. I'm going to be pulling this out, replacing it. Very inexpensive, maybe $1,000 to get that all done and fixed. Have no more issues. Toilet. I will have a plumber come out and take a look at Apparently, the toilet seat is not, or the toilet itself isn't actually attached to the floor correctly. So I'm going to have that all looked at couple vanities here installed that are fairly new but I may end up just kind of keeping them I'm gonna pull the cart you know the tub out in itself and replace all that my clipboard and going into our third bedroom here third bedroom again pull all this carpet up I don't want any carpet in this house all I want is laminate on the floor and vinyl in the kitchen and the bathroom so all of it will get pulled up and painted here closet and a little door outside back out to the front of the home as you saw earlier I had a pretty nice driveway here backyard huge backyard the square foot on this home is I believe a little bit over 9,000 square feet the home itself is only around 1200 square feet but it's a pretty good sized home huge backyard I don't know if I want to do the, the the fence on this I think it would be good for those that have pets, but I do not want pets right now in, in my current home. Even though I'm putting in laminate, that'll be waterproof, scratch-proof. I don't want to deal with pets at the moment. I want to have a couple homes under my name. That way, if I do need to, they all, you know, all the homes are contributing towards, you know, if I have an issue with one home, they can all sort of contribute towards helping and assisting fun projects within the other home. So here... I don't plan on doing the whole fence here. You can see it's kind of staked up with some fake stuff. There's a little shack in the back. I may have this just sort of thrown away, you know, knocked down and thrown away here. But a huge backyard, trees, and siding to the home is actually in pretty good condition. Besides one part of the home, there are a couple issues on the siding over here. This is all near that the, the water heater and bathroom 
the bathroom, I didn't feel any issues with the subfloor, but that's something I'm going to have checked out. I had a pest and dry raw report come back, and they did say that there's maybe some sort of issues there with the floor. So I'm going to be pulling up and replacing the whole bathroom as it is. And this is the only part of the home that had some sort of foundation, just a crack there. But this home was built back in 1940s, I believe, 1930s, 40s. Was recently sort of fixed up slightly. So I'm going to be going in there just kind of doing a little bit more work to this home. And then getting a tenant there in place. So that is the whole walkthrough of the home. So three bedroom, one bath, big backyard. Kind of going into this home. What my plan is, is rip up all the carpet throughout the entire home. Then go through, fix any sort of fixtures that need to be done. Paint the entire home like a dark gray or like an eggshell color. Something that is not teal uh, or white or the gray on the inside of these walls. Make everything very neutral as far as, you know, neutral neutral color going in putting laminate within the bedrooms and in the living room area and then completely redo the kitchen or not the kitchen the bathroom you know pulling out the tub moving the vanities out of the way replacing the subfloor replacing the subfloors here in the bedrooms where needed and fixing the siding on the outside of the house I don't have a video of the roof but apparently the, there's a chimney there that we saw the heating system the flashing on the chimney area needs to be fixed. That's maybe a couple hundred dollars, maybe up to a couple, you know, like 1000 or so, if that, to fix the flashing there. Not that expensive. And a couple spots in the roof will just need to be replaced with shingles, you know, redoing some shingles on the roof. Uh, the couple areas had shingles, but they weren't correctly nailed in, so they were able to be moved. So I'm just going to have somebody come out, take a look at the roof, make sure that it's completely leak proof, replace the flashing because I don't want any sort of leaks on the roof. So let's go ahead and take a look at the numbers and all the other information here now. Okay, so let's go over the numbers. So a little bit of backstory about the sellers. The sellers are wanting to get out of this home because the tenant that they had in place, they try to be buddy buddy with them. They were property managing it themselves. The renter who, you know, they were actually behind on it by several months. So not only was this costing the sellers money and cash flow every single month, but there had a tenant in there who hadn't paid any rent. They had an animal who was damaging their property. They just wanted to get out of this as quick as they could. They knew it needed work. So they just want to get out, move on with their life. They're in their 60s. They want to retire. So that's their backstory. The MLLS price on this home was 102500 So MLLS price, 102 500 the comparables for this home when I did my comps on this home it came back between a hundred and I estimated between 125 135 as a rough estimate for comparables for this home I, there's other homes out there selling three bedroom one bath that were 140 160 and I had my realtor also do his comparables on this home he, he came back with between 128,000 hundred and $33,000. So I felt pretty good as far as labeling this home after a pair value about $128,000. If I can get more because the market's still growing there a little bit, then that's perfect. But for right now, we're going to go ahead and say that comparables after a pair value is $128,000. Now, initially, my offer price on this home, I came in at $95,000 with the inspection contingency saying that I would do any inspection. They would pay for the pest and dry rot report. They accepted my offer. And as I got back my inspection report, there were a couple things that needed to be done. You know, bath uh, bedroom, some of the subfloor, the inspector had noticed some of the weak spots there. Pest and dry rot report came back saying that there are a couple, I don't know if it's actually pest and dry or it might be like mold or something like that. But Anyway, some of the subfloor will need to be replaced, so I'm going to be replacing the, the some of the subfloors within the bedrooms and the bathroom. I'm going to be pulling all the carpet, put it in some laminate, painting all the entire inside and outside of the home. So laminate throughout the three bedrooms and in the living areas. I'm going to be completely gutting the bathroom and putting it in a new tub. Vanities probably will stay. I'll probably get a new uh, water heater and toilet and vinyl floor there in the bathroom, kind of matching the kitchen there as well. 
And then I believe that'll pretty much it for the inside. Now the outside, some of the siding needs to be done. Paint has to happen. The roof, the flashing on the chimney needs to be replaced to prevent water damage. Some of the shingles on the roof needs to be you know, replaced and fixed or applied because some of the areas may... The, the report came back saying that some of the shingles were either missing or were not attached correctly and some of the water may be in, you know, going into the home. So that'll need to be fixed off, you know, right off the bat. You don't want any sort of water damage, water getting into your home that'll rot out your attic, it'll rot out your home. You don't want any of that mold growing because, yeah, that's terrible. So I listed off all my repairs I would like for them to either fix or reduce their price and my addendum and they came back saying okay they reduced their price by five thousand so that made me go in at ninety thousand dollars for this deal now so again comparables were at we'll say a hundred and twenty eight thousand dollars and i'm buying this home now for ninety thousand so that is a difference let's bust out our handy dandy calculator of 128 thousand minus 90,000 and then we're now at 90,000 so is that a 42% difference well I can't Let's see our difference let's just use our difference calculator this is the, this is the one I handy dandy use all the time so hundred and twenty thousand dollars and I'm buying it for ninety thousand dollars that is a difference of 34% so that's a much better percent than 34% below after a pair of value is where I'm going to be buying this. So I will need to be putting in where I estimated it around fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. So what this is going to do is I'm going to be replacing some of the siding on the home. So that could be one or two thousand dollars. I'm going to be painting the outside of the home. That's another one point five thousand dollars. So already right there, two point five thousand dollars. I'm going to be fixing some of the roof, replacing the flashing, making sure that the roof does not leak. That could be a thousand dollars there as well. So maybe four or five thousand dollars total right there on the exterior of the home. Now going into the interior of the home, I'm going to be pulling all the carpet up, replacing it with laminate throughout the bedrooms. I'm going to be fixing the subfloors during that time. So after I pull the carpet up, I'm going to be fixing the subfloors, making sure that everything is, you know, secure, not moving, nothing is able to be pressed, and all sorts of stuff. That number could be, you know, when you're replacing the subfloor, it could be a thousand dollars, it could be a couple thousand dollars, it could be ten thousand dollars. That's what my realtor said that he had a project he had just worked on. Subfloor had to be completely replaced. That's not really the case in this home. There were a couple weak spots, and I'm sure that'll be replaced pretty quick. So I'm not saying this being more than a couple, you know, one or two thousand dollars at most, if that. Also, brand new bathroom. I'm gonna be completely redoing the bathroom, so I just estimated about five thousand dollars for that. And I think that were all my numbers. So total, I estimated it between twelve to fifteen thousand dollars. So in my estimated repair costs, I just put in fourteen thousand dollars. If it goes over, okay. If it goes less, that's great. So my total project cost here is one hundred and six thousand dollars seven hundred. So one hundred and six thousand and seven hundred dollars. My after repair value on this home is one hundred and twenty-eight thousand dollars. That was the minimum number that we had said. It may end up going for more, but I like to be a little bit conservative with all my numbers, so I just put in 128. So here, the rehab period. I put in three months of rehab. I've actually contacted six different property managers. One of them has their own workforce. I've already talked to them about this property, saying, hey, I'm taking control of a three-bedroom, one-bath. What are your estimates as far as rent? What kind of, you know, do you have a workforce? What's your property management? And all that information. So they have their own workforce. Once I get it under contract and get with them, they have, you know, they'll schedule to get whatever sort of repairs I need done. And that'll get started right away. So my rehab time could actually go down from three months to maybe a month, maybe two months. Who really knows? So initially this home... You know, if I were to stay in this home for three months, I would have total cash out $107,182. Then once I got it rented without having it financed, my monthly income, I had eleven fifty for this home. This home, you know, my the property management teams, all of them said that this area could probably get between, you know, $1,100, $1,150 and $1,300 of rent, depending on the quality of the home, 
you know, the inside, you know, is it modern, the size of the yard, there's so many things and factors that can go into the home. The vacancy in the city is one or two percent. So very quickly, they already have, you know, applicants in place for whomever they're trying to get filled. So I could probably expect to be, you know, between 1200, 1250. But for monthly income here, I put in 1150 to be again, conservative with all my numbers. So this is all during the initial rental period. This is not refinance. So all this cash flow, there's no mortgage here being involved. This is just setting money aside for vacancy, for CapEx, for management, for repairs, for insurance, and for property taxes. So my total operating expenses is roughly $436.67. Now, once I go to the bank, get this finance here, I'm gonna be taking a loan of roughly $96,000 over 30 years, you know, amortized over 30 years. I put in a loan interest rate of 5.375%. That's very high, but that's my current credit union rate. I will probably go out shopping for for uh, rates as I get closer to having this, uh, you know, rent ready, have a tenant in place, getting some rent, because then I could show, and that could go towards my my loan amount when I get this loan. So there's actually better rates out there than this. 5.375 is fairly high. So this will put my monthly uh, property insurance there at $537.57. My total cash invested in this property after the refinance will be roughly $10,700. So afterwards, I will be getting monthly income of $1,150, monthly expenses, $974.24. That'll leave me with roughly $175 of cash flow that'll give me a cash on cash return of 19.71 this is if i can you know i'll probably be able to refinance before my six months that's that's a couple of rules are out there saying you have to have your property for six months but we will see on that well as you know as we get closer to that number we'll talk about how many months it took me to rehab how many months it took me to refinance what my actual numbers turned out to be these are all theoretical numbers right now. So we don't know if we're actually going to spend $14,000 or maybe closer to $20,000. We really don't know. So my cash on cash return could just get blown up and go, you know, down all the way out. So we shall see as this one sort of plays out. Also, our loan interest rate is fairly high. So a lot of these numbers, if my rent could come in, you know, higher, but I kind of lowballed everything right here. So I am expecting to cash flow between $175 and $200 of monthly cash flow, $200 plus of cash flow, which is fairly good for having around $10,000, $11,000 invested in a home. So that's $200 every single month. And as we move here down towards the bottom, here for this home, our very first year of renting it out, our total cash flow will be between $2,712 and then here, year two it'll go up to uh, not really up but i believe here with my numbers i i only have it as a one percent increase per year again rent here in oregon goes up probably a little bit more than one percent i see homes going crazy right you know from 650 to 900 dollars now within just a couple of years so I'm very conservative with my numbers, so a lot of these will probably actually be a little bit more. And this is just one property with a little bit of cash left in it. I'm not too worried about it. I'm actually in contract on a duplex right now. They've accepted my offer. I just have to pay for the inspection and the dry rot report to kind of feel better about it. But it's a little duplex there that should cash flow $500. So I feel better about that deal. But anyways, on this deal here, so cash flow is anywhere between two to four thousand dollars throughout the time of the loan but this is just one property and i plan on getting much more so that is the numbers for this specific property hopefully everything should turn out within range of my estimates but it's a learning process you know it's a learning experience i see people out there that are spending ten twenty thousand dollars to you know work with someone pay them to learn how to do investing and then they never really commit. So here, it's a ten thousand dollar. I'm putting into this deal, and we'll sh we'll see how these numbers kind of play out here in the future. So let me know in the comment section below. Do you feel comfortable going through and looking at the walkthrough of what needs to be done? How do you know? Uh, how do the estimated repairs come up in comparison to your guys' area? Is this home 
would this home be less or more expensive where you guys are located at <laughs> let me know and let me you know leave leave me some comments in the comment section below so that is it for this video hopefully you guys have enjoyed it and after i close and we begin doing some rehab i may end up doing some more videos and you know pictures of this home kind of showcasing the rehab period and such so that is it guys Thank you guys for tuning in, and of course, if you have not yet subscribed, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell to be notified every time I release new content. And then, of course, if you have any questions or just want to say hello, please leave a comment below. I will always reply back to you guys. So thank you guys for tuning in. I will see you next time. Have a great day. Bye.